I sold this decorative wall plate on eBay. I'm ready to embrace the day. I'm showing it here on my graph board just to show you that it's about an eight and a half diameter plate. This is a decorative wall plate, not a dinner plate, but what I'm about to show you on how I packed it can work for either. I'm going to be using a priority box. This one is um, outer dimension of 12.25 by 2.875 by 13.6875. It's a rectangular shaped box and I'm going to show you how I cut it down to work for my plate. I sold this decorative wall plate on eBay for $19.99 plus buyer page shipping. First I'm going to measure the plate again and it's actually 8 inches in diameter. And I'm going to wrap the plate in some tissue paper just to protect the finish. It's not going to protect the plate from breakage, it's just to uh, protect the finish for my buyer. And I'm going to work with two styrofoam plates. I think they'll work fine. These are dinner sized styrofoam plates that I just picked up from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to sandwich the plate between the styrofoam plates, the decorative plate. Now I'm trying it both ways here, but I end up deciding that I like it both plates facing upright. Using some Scotch brand heavy duty packing tape. And I'm basically going to just simply tape the styrofoam plates in four different places, opposite sides first, and then do that again. Yes, there's a little bit of opening around the plate, but that's okay. I'm going to bubble wrap it. And I like to work with half inch large bubble wrap. I'm going to fold it over a couple of times and just adjust it and tape it. And I leave the corners like they are. I always call those the wings and they help for the corners of the box. Now here's the fun part. I have this long rectangular box, but I really need a square box. So what can I do to make this plate fit into this box and only use what I need of the box? Why add extra packing material if I don't need to? So I'm kind of measuring here to find out how much I need to cut off the one end of the box. So you'll need a ruler and a pen. So I'm just kind of eyeing it here and making some marks. And I'm just working with the natural fold of the box where the flap is and just making some little dashes so I know where I want the uh, end of my box to be. And then just drawing a line. Now here's the most important part that I've learned when it comes to reducing boxes. You want to allow for the same width of flap that it has originally. You want to check the flap and then duplicate that measurement as I'm doing here above my end of my box line. I have to create a new flap and so that distance between my first line and my second line is exactly the same as the flap itself. I've been working on a padded dish mat, but I sure don't want to cut into that. So I got my largest cutting board and because I do use it for food prep, I just turn it upside down when I'm cutting boxes and I've got a utility knife and I'm basically going to cut off the excess flap. And I tend to go a little slow with this. I, I know I could probably cut it in one swoop, but I decided to just 
go down it and basically score it a little bit and go a little slower. That's just how I do it. Just checking to see if I have it scored enough, cutting it through. And once you have it scored, you can pretty much just run your utility knife right along the uh, score line that you made. And then I just use that as my guide. What I tore away, I just used the upper box, the top part of the box, as my guide to cut the back flap. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries. Again, I'm cautious with the utility knife. All right, so I've created the new flap, except I need to cut, I'm cutting the corners so that the uh, flap will fold in properly like it did before. So you kind of have to just figure out where these places are going to be. You can look at the right side and the opposite end and see where they're supposed to be, but you can pretty much figure it out where you need to make your cuts for the end of the box. Again, it has to be the same as the original flap or it just doesn't work right. So draw whatever lines you need to draw. I'm not cutting now. I'm actually scoring the new flap fold. I'm scoring it with using just a regular pen. I don't have the uh, pen open and you can use a pen just to score. But I do have to cut those corners. But first I'm identifying where the corners are. Just take your utility knife, cut that little slit down to your line, down to your score line. So you want to go slow on this part. You don't want to go too far just enough. After you make one or two of these, it gets a lot easier. The first one will always be the hardest and will take the most time. So now you can see I'm folding in the end flaps, which I've scored, and then I'm going to fold in the top and the bottom, which I've scored. There you go. It's coming together now, and I have a square box. I'm going to go ahead and tape up the new end that I created, and you want to tape it really well. taping all those freshly cut edges. They're a little rougher than the original box, so I try to tape it all down really well. So I have my new box and I'm going to check the fit here and see what I think. I may or may not add more bubble wrap. I always check it first. You know, it's got a little bit of movement in here. That means um, I don't feel it's as secure as it should be. Just giving it a little shake and like, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> I want some more bubble wrap after all. So I decided just using some half sheets, I would add some more bubble wrap to the opposite sides here. Now I could use packing paper if I wanted to, but I'm trying to keep the weight down. And so since bubble wrap is light, I'm choosing to use bubble wrap over paper. Of course, I would always bubble wrap it anyway, but instead of adding paper to my box, I'm adding more bubble wrap to my plate. Time to fold up that final end flap. It's got a peel and stick. I like that about these boxes. Just press it down good and I'm just going to add a little bit of tape to that end flap just to make sure. I've added my glass stickers on the front and back and I'm just checking the measurement here. You can see it's about 11 and a half by 12. Not perfectly square. It works for me. And as long as it's not a priority flat rate, you can do this with any priority mailbox. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate a thumbs up. I invite you to like, subscribe, ring the bell. And check that box for notifications on future videos and check out my channel Avante Avenue where I have many other types of videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue.